We continue with another stillness story from 1 Kings 19, verses 1 through 13. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary groom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there in his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altar, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? What do I say on such a day as this? We are recording this worship service the day after an angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol, destroying property, creating violence, and causing loss of life. Though I have some strong opinions about causes and accountability and responsibility this day, and this worship service is neither the time nor place to begin a political discussion we can have those discussions on another day. For today, we need to stop for just a moment and take it in. We need to open our hearts to hear a word from God through our sacred scriptures and in the silence of our hearts. You know, my first thought when I heard the news was, oh my gosh, we have gone in exactly the wrong direction with the tone of our worship service. We can't sing upbeat music when there is loss of life to mourn. We cannot celebrate light when we have experienced such destruction and violence against who we are as a people. But then I read again the text chosen for this day, and I could do nothing other than speak a word about Elijah and Ahab and Jezebel. I could do nothing other than to look to Elijah as a guide for our next steps. 
Listen again to Elijah's plea for before God. I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. I'm just going to say it. Too much of Christianity, like in Israel, like Israel in Elijah's day, has lost its way. Too many Christians have forsaken the covenant, thrown out the teachings of Jesus himself, and killed the words of the prophets with self-righteous arrogance and selfish ambition. Too much of the most loudly declared Christianity today is focused on hating or at least fearing our neighbors, on fearing anything different on distrusting anything that one does not understand, on being right, on getting our own way. No matter how many times we are told differently by our sacred text, through the voices of angels and prophets and Jesus himself, no matter how many times we read those crucial words, fear not, too many of us have constructed a theology, an entire belief system based in fear. This belief system that has nothing to do with the deep and trusting faith then leads to anxiety and anger and distrust and eventually violence. And then Flags bearing the name of Jesus show up at a gathering of arrogant, violent terrorists who mean to force the rest of us into a dictatorship of their own choosing. I think many of us can relate to Elijah. This tension grows in our nation, in fact, around the world. Silos of belief systems oppose to one another. And what do we do? Where do we turn? Will we put ourselves in danger? Elijah, before the story we read today, had struck out in violence against the prophets of Jezebel. Now, maybe that was what he needed to do, to begin to turn the people back to their God. I certainly don't know. I certainly cannot judge that situation. But at this point in the story, we find Elijah fearing for his life, running away, and really at the point of despair. Because at this point, he is asking to die. It is enough Lord, now, O oh Lord, take my life. For I am no better than my ancestors. And God says, go out and stand on the mountain of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. And here's the part that I think we people of faith desperately need to hear today. As Elijah stands on that mountain, there is a wind so strong that it is breaking the mountains down around him. But the scripture says God is not in that wind. And there is an earthquake, but God is not in the earthquake. And there is fire, but God is not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. 
Then there came a voice to meet him. We keep looking for God in the escalation of conflict, this mighty warrior. Now to be sure, God will be with us in that place as well. But if we really want to recognize God's place and God's action, if we want to feel God's presence at a deep level, if we want to know what God has to say to us, we need to be still. We need to let go of all of the anger that we're carrying, the violence, the cynicism, the hopelessness, the anxiety, the foolish pride. We need to put it all down and listen. Just listen at the depth of our being. We need again to get in touch with that light within, the light at our core, placed there by God's own hand, so that we might connect with this God of sheer silence, especially when we are at the deepest point of despair. So I believe that this is exactly the time to talk about finding and shining our light into this broken world. True, on this day it may feel as though there is no flame left, but God has not left us. God has not allowed our flames to be extinguished. Those flames burn somewhere in the depth of our beings, in the ashes of what we had hoped 2021 would bring. There is this little amber glowing. We need only to be still, to pay attention, and open that ember to the gentle wind of the Spirit. And when that wind starts to blow, that ember starts to glow, and that glow begins a flame. And once again, that flame burns brightly, defiantly against all that is going on. This world needs the light of Christ. This world does not need flags and slogans about Jesus. It needs the light of Christ, shining brightly from and through Christ's disciples in this place, caring and leading and loving, loving in Christ's name. May it be so.